This poem is entitled, The Limits of Reason. After sweating in that hospital for two years following my graduation from LPN school and observing the directions the lives of my friends were taking, and after my fiancé dumped me, claiming I was irrational because I would not give him more money for his education to become a logician, I'd had enough of that ennui town and I found an old trunk that my great-grandfather had brought over from Ireland. I packed it full of my disparate belongings, threw it in the back seat of the car and hit the highway north. I wasn't sure where I was going, just figured that road would lead me somewhere, somewhere I might see my new self coming, hitching a ride. It was kind of peaceful, quiet at first, rolling through small towns as silent as cemeteries, contemplating the void. But then I began to hear faint rumblings from the back seat. I turned to see the lid of the old trunk slowly opening up and a variety of people and things emerging from its interior. The first voice I could distinguish was Dostoevsky stating that the opposite, the opposite of, of love, love is, not, is hate, not hate, but the, but persistent, the persistent use, use of, of the, the rational mind. mind. I saw my harmonica forging its way out to play. It began wailing lovesick blues. My lipstick jumped out, threw off its cap, and joined in. Baudelaire appeared presenting Rimbaud with a bouquet of Fleur de Mal. Sarah Teasdale was turning into a skylark and flew out the window. Rilke was writing letters to a young poet and addressing it to me. James Joyce was writing Ulysses and addressing it to God. Some damp handkerchiefs I hadn't had time to wash were giving a cold to Bob Dylan, yet he could still be heard rasping out, A hard rain! A hard rain! Sylvia Plath was turning suicide into poetry. Novalis was standing on my box of Tide proclaiming Poetry, poetry heals, the heals the wounds inflicted by reason. by reason. Thomas Aquinas was muttering Faith takes up, faith takes up where reason, reason leaves, leaves off. off. The mirror was looking for the last exit to Brooklyn admonishing me to do the same, lest we be forever on this highway. Jean-Paul Sartre was howling, There, there is, is no, no exit. exit. Allen Ginsberg howl. was howling, Howl, 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 howl. The cacophony howl. was getting to me. I was beginning to panic. Fears were escalating that I had somehow gotten onto the road to absurdity. I turned on the radio, seeking a word from the rational world. The nuclear alarm was blaring at 80 decibels, droning out the entire clamor from the black seat. Then came the indifferent, trained voice. This was only a, is test. Only a test in the event of, in a, the event of a real emergency. Stay tuned to this Stay tuned station, to this station for, further for further instructions.